and a small detachment of Blood Angels have been ordered to engage and destroy a gene-sealer cult that have infiltrated and infested an Imperial planet, Gilmira Primus, in the Segmentum Ultima sector of the Imperium. Their mission is to kill the head of their brood, their patriarch, and sever the head of the hive mind. Thank you so much for tuning in to this second edition battle report. Gene Seller Cult will be under the command of Patriarch Paul. We can look at Paul's list in more close detail. We have six pure strain gene stealers, an acolyte, and some neophytes, and another group of six pure strain gene stealers. Acolyte Horfell Moss will lead his brood brothers into battle, along with a missile launcher. The Patriarch, the Fated Father, will lead the brood. And Gregorius Stitch, the Magus, will be able to advise the Fated Father in the battle. To support the brood, Paul's taking along a sentinel with an assault cannon and a mole mortar. Let's now take a look at the Blood Angels and let's see what I'm bringing today. First, we have the tactical squad Andreo, led by a veteran sergeant, taking along a melter gun as a special weapon and a heavy bolter as part of the heavy weapon choices. Terminator Squad Lorenzo with an Assault Cannon and Heavy Flamer at the ready. And finally we have Squadron Night Eyes, our 5 Space Marine Scout Squadron. Space Marine Terminator Captain Bezriel is accompanied by Malakai, his Librarian. The terrain arranged on our battlefield is time to roll for sides. With the Blood Angels winning the roll, they chose the side with the Bunker and Fortified Defences, while as the Genes their player, deployed on the opposite side. Before deployment, I played the Force March strategy card. So, the tactical squad Andrea were chosen to form a line of defense behind the barricade. After playing the Force March strategy card, the Gene Seller player had to place all of his troops now and deploy them on the battlefield within his deployment zone. Paul opted to take the hill and forest areas for his Brew Brothers to deploy in. with the Fated Father Patriarch taking shelter within the forest. With the spotter hidden up in the bunker, the Mole Mortar was placed in Sanctuary behind the forest, alongside two broods of gene stealers and some hybrids. Squad Lorenzo took their positions behind these Imperial Ruins. The Epistolary Librarian, Malachi, was standing atop the bunker next to their commander, Ezreal. The Infiltrating Scout Squad took up their strategic position upon the bunker to take some snapshots at the Gene Silla Brood as they advanced. Paul also decided to place his Brood Brothers and the Spotter on top of the bunker, also in a hidden state. Then we just roll for first turn with the Genesis rolling a 5 and the Marines rolling a 6, winning the first turn of the game. I took this opportunity moment to play my second strategy card, which was Strafing Run. But to my great disappointment, I rolled two jams on the sustained fire dice. Night Eye Scout Squad took this opportunity to come out of hiding and take some snapshots at the Brood Brothers in front of them, resulting in two kills. Following the scouts, the tactical squad Andrea opened up with the heavy bolter onto the Brood Brothers standing on the hill. With the heavy bolter shots hitting true, four shots hit the hapless Brood Brother and resulting in a kill. In response to that, Paul played Sabotage on the Tactical Squad, meaning that in subsequent turns they need to roll a 4, 5, or 6 in order to shoot. And with the Brewers taking enough casualties, they need to roll a test so they didn't fall back, which they passed. As Squad Lorenzo couldn't see any visible targets out in the open, they decided to go in Overwatch, and then we'll go into the Psyche phase, which I rolled a 12 for. Malachi cast the Teleportation spell 
which allowed him to move 46 inches, which was not nullified by the gene stillers, allowing Malachi to be teleported 15 inches to join the Lorenzo squad behind the ruins. Next, the Acolyte's intentions was to cast Displacement on the Brew Brothers in the forest to move them up to 3d6 inches. Malachi attempted to nullify, succeeding on a 3+, plus, given that he is a level 3 and the Alakai is level 1. Gregoria Stitch had the scouts in his sights and caused Carmine Assassin, which is a toughness test on one of the scouts. I didn't have a nullify, but I did roll a 1, passing on the test. Gregoria Snitch was not done yet. He cast a sail on one of the scouts on top of the bunker. As I didn't have a nullify card, the Space Moon Sergeant was flung 6 inches out of the bunker, onto the ground, and then used as bait for the next hand-in combat against the hybrids. Malachi placed one of his Force cards into his Force Axe for the next turn. With no enormous surprise, the Neophytes charged the Veteran Sergeant. Squad Lorenzo took the opportunity then to take the advantage and open up with Overwatch shots. With the Veteran Sergeant's Stormbolt jamming, it was up to the Soul Cannon to make up for the loss, rolling four hits and a jam. Of the shots fired from the Assault Cannon, it resulted in three deaths to the Gene Stealers. Using the Fated Father's leadership, they managed to pass their morale check. And the ever-threatening Sentinel with an Assault Cannon made its way around the bunker. The Brood started to make their advances, running the Gene Stealers up in both groups along the flank. In the shooting phase, with the aid of the spotter, the Mole Mortar opened up onto the scouts in the bunker, rolling a 6, causing a subterranean burst. Finding a target, the Sentinel opened up with his assault cannon, but failed as it needed a 6 because of the Marines in hard cover. Then the Gene Stealer Brute Brother with Missile Launcher had targeted one of the Marines behind cover with his shot actually missing and deviating, but not causing any wounds to the Marines. In the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, the veteran sergeant of the scout squad, Night Eyes, bravely fought but lost his life in the end. Potential danger loomed as displacement was cast on one of the g Stealer Broods, but Malachi had a nullify card and successfully rolled a 5 to nullify that power. Not being ranged to be really potentially dangerous with his uh, psychic powers, he cast teleportation on himself again, but was successfully nullified by the mages. At the beginning of the second turn, I removed the jam tokens from my terminators, and then proceeded to run the terminators with Malachi in behind the tactical squad. As ammunition supplies were now low and limited with the sabotage card played on the tactical squad, with a roll being made for each of the space beings that wanted to shoot and a roll of four or more, they couldn't shoot for the turn, having run out of ammo. As most of the tactical marines are able to shoot, the vet veteran sergeant threw a rad grenade out in front of the gene stealers, needing a six but rolling a five and then deviating and scattering two inches in front. Of the two space marines that had ammunition and could see and shoot, having rolled their to hit rolls, unfortunately, none of them could wound. With Bezriel's vantage point on top of the bunker, he opened fire with his storm bolter, hitting, and then causing two hits, resulting in one wound and one death for the gene stealers. Next, the Night Eye squadron up in the tower took some rapid fire shots at the neophytes down below. Their shots rung true, and both the neophytes were killed in the action. For the Psychic Phase, seven cards were generated. Malachi cast Teleportation upon himself to get him closer to the enemy, which the Genesis player tried to nullify, but alas, he rolled a 1. With not having enough inches to move forward, Malachi decided to move across to the other side of the Tactical Squad. Then the Fated Father cast Psychic Scream upon Malachi. Upon realizing how powerful Psychic Scream was as a psychic power, luckily enough I had Demonic Attack up my sleeve, and Paul, sneakingly using my own dice, rolled a 6 to save himself.
Instinctively, the Gene Stealers didn't want to go close to the Red Grenade, but instead they circled around the base of this rocky outcrop. Both Brood Brothers, from the hill and in the forest, started converging on the Mages' position. Again, the more Mortar centered his attention towards the bunker, resulting in two deaths to the Scouts. For the Gene Stealer's second reinforcement card, he had reinforcements, which allowed the Neophytes to come back into the fray. With the Gene Stealer's intent on killing the last two Scouts in that bunker, Scouts would have to seek cover against a barrage of Lasgun shots. Under a barrage of Lasgun fire, it was up to me to make to my saving throws, and, but unfortunately, one of them succumbed to one of the Lasgun shots and was taken down. The biggest threat the Tactical Marines faced was the Assault Cannon on the Sentinel, scoring two hits and a jam in the end. Paul choosing the exact targets he wanted to hit, both resulting in wounds. It was up to me to make my heroic saving throws now, resulting in both of them dying. With the Psychic Phase resulting in six cards, Carmine Assassin was cast on the remaining scout on top of the bunker, but successfully rolled a two under his toughness and survived. I cast Teleportation on Malachi again, really needing a big roll here to see myself getting closer to the enemy, which I did, and teleporting straight into the Heart of Darkness. With one of the Acolytes casting a cell and not having a Nullify, the Librarian Malachi was transported into hand in combat with the Brood Brothers. This worked out perfectly for Malachi as he wanted to cast Holocaust upon himself, causing mass damage to everything around him, but it was met with a Destroy Power card in the end. Resulting in a D6 roll, plus adding any power cards, which Malachi won, and keeping his Holocaust power. At the end of turn 2, we had a look at the victory points and the Space Beans were leading, having killed the Neophytes with one victory point so far. The last surviving scout charged into combat bravely. Bezreel came out of his bunker to join his brothers before the final assault. to squad Andreo digging in behind their defences went into Overwatch. And the Dreadnought Squadron Lorenzo got themselves into better positions to fire upon the Gene Stealers. Malachi injected himself with friends on for the ensuing combat. With Malachi now in a state of frenzy, doubling his attacks with his Force Axe, the Brew Brothers were no challenge for him, and he followed up into the crew of the Heavy Bolter. The Red Thirst took over this last Scout Marine as he brought down another one of the Brew Brothers. With the Psychic Phase underway, Malachi had tried to cast Teleportation upon himself, but Paul was successful in nullifying it. Intent on exterminating all of the scouts of the Night Eye Squadron. A Carmine Assassin was cast. I failed to nullify on a 1, and then rolled 6 on his toughness test, resulting in the death of the last scout. I placed my last remaining Force card into my Force Axe. The first action for the Gene Cell player was to engage Malachi in hand in combat with the Fated Father and all his Brood Brothers in an attempt to overwhelm and bring him down. Mages feeling vulnerable took shelter beside the bunker. Much to my surprise, the fated father ordered the Gene Stealer Brood to fall back. The Mormorda team set its sights on causing as much disruption and destruction within the enemy lines behind the fortifications. But I sung my praises to the Emperor as no casualties were caused. The Brew Brothers' frag missile actually deviated off target and causing no casualties in the end. 
Frenzon still running through Malachi's veins. It was the Genesilus tactic all along to have all the Bro Brothers attack first and then have the Faded Father attack last, causing the most amount of attacks. Luckily, with the two attacks that came through, Refractor Field saved the only one that wounded and he was to live another day. In the Psychic phase, a Psychic Scream was cast at Malachi once again. Demonic Attack was my response to this one. And with the fate in its hands, the fate of Father was saved and no ill effects befell him. Next, the Acolyte cast Carmine Assassin against Malachi, but this time in my attempt to nullify, I was successful again rolling a 6. The Fated Father, realizing what the plot might be with uh, Malachi, he decided to cast a sail on himself. I failed, rolling a 4, and the Fated Father was then able to move out of hand in combat and safe within the forest. Before entering the last turn of the game, we checked the victory points conditions, and I had scored a few more points from destroying at least 50% of his Brood Brother squads. The first action for the Marines was to place the Terminators on Overwatch. With no other further movement for the Marines, we went straight into the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase with Malachi still on friends on, and still carving his way through with his power axe through the forces of evil in the Broods and of course the Acolyte which fell to his power axe and to his frenzied strength of bloodthirst and he followed up into the Faded Father. Psychic Phase started and ended with Catastrophe with Ultimate Force on Psychic Scream and myself rolling a 11 on the test, killing Malachi instantly. True Gene Steel the Cult fashion, he thought he'd rub salt into the wounds and show me that he had Energy Drain and Ultimate Force in the two cards he was dealt. May the God Emperor bless you for your bravery in your attempt to assassinate the Fated Father and to sever the head of the Hive Mind. Alas, it was not this time, my friend, but Malachi, next time maybe you can be resurrected to enact that same task in the future. Adding up the points at the end of the turn, so with Malachi dying, he had an extra couple of points, and then Witch Hunt, of course, gave him an extra five, resulting to nine to four, and I, of course, had assassins. But I couldn't accomplish my mission. I tried so hard, and I hope you guys all enjoyed this battle report. Me and Paul really enjoyed playing these forces for the very first time, and I would like to thank both uh, Carnifex and Zane for sending me these models to paint for Apulet Studios and I hope to present another battle report in the future. Till then guys, please remember to like and share and subscribe to the channel and thank you so much again for all my patrons who help support me for every video that I make on the channel. Take care guys, thank you, bye bye.